Oh and my we can God. talk get about the hell out of here. We can talk about Rogers out of here. Okay. Well, what is the need to bring up the Yankees? It's just, I don't, it's just, it's just stuff to bring up. Cause, you know. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. This came out of nowhere. Oh Clemson is a top team. Don't start with that. Clemson's a top team, no doubt. A hundred percent. Let's see it on Saturday. Then, then they might move down. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with episode number 56. Thank you guys for all the support on our latest videos. Let's keep it up. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and go follow us on our socials on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever you could think of, we got it. So hit the little link in our uh, description and you can follow all of us there. Anyways, let's hop right into the go of the number 56. Connor, who are you going with here? Man, there is only one answer for this question. I swear to gosh, Tommy, if this isn't unanimous, it's going to be all on you. Because I know I'm, I know the other two guys are going this one. <clears throat> but it's got to be number 56 of the New York Giants, Lawrence Taylor. Ten-time Pro Bowler, eight-time All-Pro, two-time Super Bowl champ. He won an MVP as a defensive player, four-time defensive player of the year, 132 and a half career sacks, nine interceptions as an outside linebacker, and two touchdowns, including a 97-yard interception return. That's not seen from a linebacker. He only played three seasons in his career without not being in all 16 games. He's in the Hall of Fame. This is easily Lawrence Taylor. I love that pick. Matt, are you agreeing with Connor here? Connor, I don't think unanimous is in Tommy's uh, dictionary because he, he hasn't gone unanimous with us <laughs> in recent episodes. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's bad, Tommy. I, I love to see your picks every, every episode, but it's got to be Lawrence Taylor. I mean, <laughs> that's the only right answer here. Um, Tommy, I'm wondering who you're going to throw out this time. But, um, I mean, I think Connor said everything – for me um you know that that interception that long interception was amazing that pick six actually uh one that i remember is james harrison who did that um in the super bowl against uh, the cardinals but no that that that's not that doesn't happen all the time so lawrence taylor was probably one of the best giants to ever play alongside uh you know eli manning we've, we, we've talked about before um but but other than that I, it's got to be lawrence taylor Taylor, that's it. And also, you know, our TikTok, we haven't posted in a while. Maybe we should do that. That's all my thoughts. We, we definitely can get some uh, behind-the-scenes footage on there. But anyways, Tommy, the moment of truth. Are you going with Lawrence Taylor or are you going with some scrubby baseball guy? So much pressure. I am going. What did you say? So much pressure on Tommy. <laughs> We're like, I know. Roll, please. But, uh, well, I decided this yesterday. I'm breaking the streak. I am going with Lawrence Taylor. I wrote it down. I don't know if people believe that, but I did write it down yesterday. Cap. What? I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. I, I will literally show you my notepad and my phone. Yesterday, I decided Lawrence Taylor, and you gave all the stats. He's a Hall of Famer, 10-time Pro Bowler. In his 13 seasons, he was outstanding. So, um, what? I want to see. I want to see the note in your phone. Yeah, Tom, I'm gonna show it to you. To you. Tom, I mean, Tommy, look for your notepad, and I'll, I'll give who my number 56 is. How about that? Sound like a good plan? Okay. All right. So obviously, I'm going with Lawrence Taylor for number 56. <laughs> he's by far the best giant to ever play. He's he's probably a top three NFL player of all time. This guy absolutely wreaks havoc on every offensive line imaginable. Um, probably the best defensive player ever alongside Deion Sanders. There's absolutely no one else to compare with Lawrence Taylor for number 56. So, Tommy, are you telling the truth? I am. I'll send it into the group chat. Right? No, show us on the camera. I feel okay. like you show the viewers. No, I'll show you. So, <laughs> if you – see, you can't see it. But – if you look up there, you'll right. see 257. Lift your phone Scroll down. Bit. Scroll down. And then I'll scroll down. I have two because I went through and did all baseball people. So you're going to see Mark Burley and then Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, I, okay. yeah, I'll okay. give it to him. He put Did you have Dallas Keuchel on there? <laughs> I know. Now I'm giving away my future ones. But, hey, he was great. 
He was All right. We'll, we'll, we'll try to sway you away from those future numbers. <laughs> right now we are unanimous on number 56. This doesn't happen very often because there aren't very, very good baseball players that we all decide. And Tommy only goes baseball. One of the few episodes where he does not go baseball just happened here today. Tommy, do you want to give like a little speech or anything? Well, it's been 23 episodes, you know, since I did it with Michael Jordan. And, you know, it's very rare. That wasn't that even I... unanimous. <laughs> that wasn't even unanimous. That wasn't unanimous. But yeah, that wasn't unanimous. Like but, but still, I mean, I had to go with him today. And I would like to mention Mark Burley. I know that he's nowhere <laughs> near Lawrence Taylor's level. But um, that's who I was thinking about going with. But he's just way better, obviously. So I had to go with him today. Yes, I'm proud of you, Tommy. I'm proud of Thank you. you. Thank well, you. Well, hey, this is a, a great segment to open up episode number 56 of Go Chat. We're going to jump into some NFL talk next. It's going to be a nice, interesting segment. We'll get into that. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We're back. Like we said, we got some NFL talk. This past weekend, we saw Matt Patricia, the old coach for the Detroit Lions, be fired. Um, that's the third coach. Yep, third coach because uh, the Texans fired Bill O'Brien and the Falcons fired Dan Quinn. Third coach so far. Obviously, we, we've seen teams uh, that, that have been on really bad losing streaks are on the bottom of the NFL standings. So I just want to ask you guys a question. Which NFL coach deserves to be fired next after we saw, we saw those three coaches get fired this year? I'm going to start with you, Tommy. I, I feel like I feel like you got you got a good one. Yeah, I have to go with the most obvious one out there, Adam Gase of the New York Jets. I mean, they're 0-11, not too much to say about them. They're just a terrible team. And, well, see, I don't know if the team necessarily is terrible. Obviously, they're not great, right, because they've lost 11 games. But they don't have a coach that's putting them in a good position to win. So, um, you know, a lot of that has to go on Adam Gase. Last year, they went 7-9. and nine. And, you know, it's not great, but it's not terrible. They don't even look like they have a chance of winning a game the rest of the way. They they scored three points and uh, on Sunday. And didn't the Broncos do that? And they didn't even have a quarterback. So, you know, and some of that goes on Sam Darnold, too. You can't put all of it on the coach, but he's certainly a big reason why. And I, I don't really see how he can be there next year. I don't think that's good for the organization, but... We'll see what happens. I mean, uh, Connor, do you have any response? You brought up Sam Darnold. I thought that was uh, that would get to you. <laughs> you know what? If we're talking about Sam Darnold, I feel like it's time that I actually come forward on the show and say it. I've said it on this show before that he is the one for the Jets. I'm going to rebut that statement and say that he is not the franchise quarterback in the New York Jets. Um, what I saw on Sunday – him missing just some really bad throws. I mean, he's thrown three touchdown passes this season versus eight interceptions and has just over a thousand yards. Yeah, some of that could be play calling, but Adam Gase has he's been a coach for Peyton Manning before. Peyton Peyton Manning won an MVP. He, he Adam Gase does have a good system. It may not just work in New York. And absolutely, I do agree with Tommy that Adam Gase does deserve to be fired after an all-11 start to a season. But the fault does fall on Sam Darnold. I mean. All Jets fans have been waiting for Sam Darnold to get out on the field with his three main receivers. And he had that on Sunday and he threw for 179 yards and two interceptions. So how much blame can be put on Adam Gase when your quarterback is still isn't doing that? So, so now I, I am a part of the Jets fans who are, who are opening arms to a potential number one draft pick in Trevor Lawrence. Wow. That's uh that's weird. That, I'm shocked because you have been so against the drafting of Trevor Lawrence. You know, you uh, the Jets are kind of tanking right now. You wanted the Jets to win some games, but it seems like you're uh, hitching on that Trevor Lawrence bandwagon now. I, I would love to see the Jets win a game. I'm not saying that I'm rooting against them for the season, but it is just so unlikely with the rest of their schedule facing the Raiders this week, then the Seahawks, then they have the Browns, they have – the Patriots again, and I don't remember their other game, but it's not an easy one. I, I don't see them getting a win, and I think they're going to solidify the number one draft pick. I think Jacksonville's actually going to grab a second win. They've been playing pretty decent. Yeah, um, I personally didn't see any of the Jets game. Uh, go figure. But uh, so I can't comment on Sam Darnold myself. But 
Connor, might as well just give us your uh, coach that you want to bring up. Well, if there is a coach that has to be fired in the NFL and who I would fire today, it is the Chargers head coach, Anthony Lynn. I mean, he has just, he hasn't coached well at all this season. All of their games that they've lost outside of Sundays have been by one possession. And that, that ultimately falls on the coach. If you can't win close games, that's on you especially when you have a rookie quarterback in Justin Herbert who is playing his absolute tail off and is going to set rookie records in passing yards and in touchdowns and set them easily, there's no reason why you only have three wins on the season. And as far as the play call on Sunday, when you're on like the four-yard line after a Hail Mary with a minute to go down 10, you run the ball with no timeouts? Well, I, I didn't understand that at all. I thought it was just an absolute stupid call and if there's a coach that should have been fired, I mean, the Jets game against the Chargers was close, and that shouldn't have been close because Herbert played a great game. It is time that Anthony Lynn gets fired, and if you see a better coach in there with the Chargers, Justin Herbert is undoubtedly an MVP in this league. All right, that's also a good pick. Mike, I'm going to throw it to you. What coach do you think should be fired next? Um, I definitely think Anthony Lynn was a, a great choice, and he's – he should be number one on everyone's hit list for um, firings in the NFL. All these, and this isn't just a one-year thing. This is exactly what happened last year with the Chargers. They came into the year with high expectations. Um, many people were looking for them to see, um, improve upon their playoff berth and playoff win against the Ravens the year before, and they come out and they're five and eleven. Um, they lost a bunch of close games, just like they have this year. And it's kind of sad to see how much talent is on this team. Joey Bosa, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams. Now Justin Herbert has brought another, a whole new dimension to this team um, with his legs and his big arm, which Rivers has none of that. And they still can't win games. I, I think the job in Denver that Vic Vangio is doing right now really shows how much uh, coaching – can make a difference, right? The Denver Broncos are four and seven right now with countless numbers of injuries on their roster. I, I still think that they have the most salary on the IR and they have been able to overcome this and win four games. And they just started a wide receiver at quarterback last week. Yeah, they got crushed in that game, but they've won four games this whole season. Drew Locke has been battling injuries and Anthony Lynn has no excuses in LA. Anthony Lynn has to go and He's the number one option here. We could get into some other coaches who probably should be fired as well. But Anthony Lynn, I just need to emphasize that point that he has to go. Okay. Um, so you, you pretty much said Anthony Lynn in, in agreement with Connor. Um, my personal pick, you know, this is a I, – I realize that I formatted this the wrong way when I told you guys this. I because, like, being fired right now would kind of be hard to fire um, a coach right now, given that, you know, you have Jacksonville. So, yeah, maybe Doug Marone should be fired. You have the Jets who are at the bottom. But I want to give out this one coach. And I personally saw this team Sunday night. It's the Chicago Bears. I understand how good um, Matt Nagy was being the coach of the year two years ago. But when you go out and you play the Green Bay Packers and you have the best run defense, like, in the league, you have – Khalil Mack, yes, you didn't have um, the de – what's the defensive tackle's Akeem name? Akeem Hicks. Akeem yeah, you don't Hicks. have Akeem Hicks, but you still have an amazing defense. That's the only thing going for the Bears, to be honest, is, is that defense. So when you got that great of a defense and then the Packers – I mean, Aaron Jones had 90 yards, Jamal Williams had 73, and a touchdown. When the Packers go out, I get the Packers' offenses, um, you know, it, it's great. But – they tore that defense to shreds. I mean, the score at the end of the third quarter was 41 to 10. And, you know, we saw even before Matt Nagy, he finally gave up his play call. But before when he was doing play call, those plays were not good at all. I mean, that Bears offense has literally been struggling since Nick Foles' what, second game? Like, he had that one really good game against Atlanta. He's been struggling the whole season. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, they had some really close calls, but still – um, it's just Matt Nagy, you had a good year with Chicago. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying you're a bad coach, but I think it's time for Matt Nagy to be fired at least, 
at least at the end of the year, since Chicago technically is still in the run for to be in the hunt. But you got no excuses. Um, just that whole QB issue too. I mean, like Trubisky goes three and zero. He's playing bad against Atlanta. You throw in Foles, and yeah, Foles, Foles, he did amazing stuff. I mean, he was my go of the week. But then, <laughs> you know, Foles is starting to look bad and. I mean, I know Trubisky was hurt, but still, I, that whole just QB room is all messed up. I think the Bears just, as much as Connor, you know, you said that uh, they're going to go to playoffs. I think the Bears just need to, not per se tank, but need Maybe. to look towards the future. Yeah, I definitely think we have seen a a crumbling of that team in recent weeks. I mean, they started four and one, or five. They started five and one, five and, and one. now they're now they're zero oh and five. They lost five straight. Yeah, which is just, I mean, you don't you don't see that for many teams in the NFL not called the Jacksonville Jaguars or the New York Jets or anything like that, especially, especially with a decent team. I mean, we think about the pieces that they have. They have Khalil Mack. They have Allen Robinson. They have young receivers in Darnell Mooney. And, oh, what is the other guy's name? I can't think Anthony of it. Miller? Yeah, Anthony Miller. And you have, you have Nick Foles, who is a Super Bowl MVP, and you have a young quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky, and you have David Montgomery – it, they have pieces there. Absolutely. It's, it's chemistry that I don't think they've built up or that they lost since they were in the AFC or since they were um, NFC the, uh, wildcard, NFC wildcard team a couple of years ago and lost on the Cody Parkey missed kick. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't double know what doink. the double doink if you, yeah. <laughs> They're the Chicago double doinkers. Are you kidding me? That's, that's my nickname for them. You know, you know, I got those nicknames for my rival teams, except Detroit, since they're so irrelevant. I, I think the biggest thing that we could do now is so we've mentioned we've mentioned three teams here so far, right? Three teams. Yeah. W- what replacements do you think we could fit for each of these teams? I mean, we have we have candidates in Eric Bieniemy in Kansas City as their offensive coordinator. We have a bunch of college coaches who seem like they could come into the NFL. Um, we have defensive coordinators out in San Francisco and um, Sala who could potentially be a coach, maybe step into um, Chicago and kind of keep the defensive mentality. What do you guys think? Airbnb, Airbnb, he Airbnb. He, Airbnb. he needs to get hired. I don't know why you're not hiring him. He's literally Andy Reid. Andy Reid calls the plays, but still, he's an amazing offensive coordinator. That Kansas City offense is lethal at this point. Um, I, I don't know what Airbnb enemy had to do more to not get hired off season. I, I wanted the Cowboys to hire him as their head coach, but obviously, you know, that didn't turn out. He didn't even get a single offer. It looks like over the past off season, I feel like he will this um, coming off season, just because of how good the Kansas city offense is. And, you know, even though he's technically not calling the plays, he's, he's playing a pivotal role and um, how that offensive run, they've shifted to more of, um, well, they've implemented more of a running game with the emergence of Clyde edwards Hilaire and them signing Le'Veon Bell. And they've really diversified their offense. We've seen offenses over the past couple of years really get caught up by defenses in the NFL. That's just what happens. You saw in the Rams after they won their Super Bowl, you're seeing it this year w- with Baltimore. You, you saw it with uh, Philadelphia after they won their Super Bowl. Um, you see with teams all across the league. And the biggest thing that you could do as a coach is to adapt and overcome. And that's what Kansas City has done so far. They have been untouchable the past couple of years offensively. And what Eric Enemy is doing is in Kansas City is very praiseable, and he should 100% get a head coaching job this offseason. You know, I've said on this show before, going to Tommy's team, um, or my, my team, but the team that Tommy mentioned in the Jets, um, I've came on here and I said that Jim Harbaugh from Michigan, I think would be a really good candidate, but then you really think about his resume. He hasn't won any big games since he'd been in college. And now the name Pat Fitzgerald has been floating around Northwestern head coach. And we see Northwestern, they really haven't been a big top 25 team in college football in recent years. And now they were all the way up to eight last week. They did, they did lose this past weekend, but Pat Fitzgerald, I think, if, if he gets interviews and if he gets offers, I think he could be a very, very good coach in the NFL 
if he finds the right team with the right pieces. And I think the Jets could be that piece. I mean, they do have a GM who does know what he's doing in draft picks. They have 13 draft picks this year. They have the most cap space in the NFL for free agency. I think it could be a good a good rebuilding year for the Jets if they do decide to let Adam Gase go and they let Joe Douglas work and they get a good coach in there. I think the Jets could be a team that goes from the number one overall pick to a potentially division um, battling team. Um, yeah, Pat Fitzgerald has been amazing for Northwestern. I watched the game against Wisconsin, obviously Northwestern won. That's why they were rated uh, at eighth this past weekend. So that, that's a great candidate. Jim Harbaugh, I'm not sold on. His best year was a Super Bowl with Colin Kaepernick, who had an absolutely electric year that year. So I'm not that sold on him um, per se. I just don't think that he he's that good of a NFL coach. I do think he's going to come back to the NFL, though, because his Michigan career has just been absolutely awful. And, you know, I do also want to mention that a lot of people thought that the Bill O'Brien firing would lead to Romeo Cornell being intern head coach, and then they possibly potentially get another signing at the end of the season. But Romeo Cornell has done a really good job stepping in for that Houston team. I mean, what were they when Bill O'Brien was fired? One and seven, and now they're four and seven? I, I think Romeo Cornell could. I think Bill O'Brien was thing? fired earlier. Yeah, I thought I thought they were like 0-4 or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but it was definitely before one and seven. Well, even still, Romeo Cornell has definitely turned the team around. We've definitely seen some improvements throughout there. Deshaun Watson's playing really good. Obviously, we'll have to see how good Deshaun Watson's going to play the rest of the season without Will Fuller being out wide after he got suspended six games for PEDs. But I think Romeo Cornell could be solidifying his job in Houston. What do you guys think about that? Um, that might be interesting. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, well, like you said, Deshaun Watson has been absolutely terrific these past couple weeks, um, you know, kind of since Bill O'Brien was fired, to be honest. And, yeah, the first couple of weeks they were playing Kansas City, Pittsburgh. I don't remember who else, but another really good team. So, of course, I those are going to be losses either way, I think, even if they played them now. But, yeah, Romo, Romeo's been playing great – or coaching great. Uh, excuse me. He's not out there playing. But um, Ro- Romo hasn't played great in quite some time either. Um, Romo? Tony right, Romo. Tony Romo. What if Tony Romo was a coach? No, I'm kidding. I think I think he'd be a good coach, but he he so. seems solidified in that role with CBS. They're they're paying him the big bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, do don't, I don't think he'd get that job. Do we have any other last minute comments about any the the NFL coaching carousel, so to speak, this season? Um, yes, I actually do have two more comments. Um, th- this isn't necessarily about the you know the head coaching job, but Philadelphia they have to clean house. They just have to, they have to get Howie Roseman out of there. Doug Peterson, he's in question too. I still think you know, he can be a good coach because we saw what he did last year with uh, Wentz and how they won nine games with you know very little on the perimeter um, wide receiver wise, and with him winning a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. But Jim Schwartz has to go. They have to hire an actual offensive coordinator because they literally do not have one right now. Doug Peterson has to stop calling the plays. I don't know what he's doing running on like third and five. And uh, once, you know, that that's a discussion for a different day. And also just one more replacement, Matt Everflus, the defensive coordinator in Indiana. He has been fantastic this season. Indiana has a number one defense, and I feel like he could be a hot uh, candidate for teams across the league. Man, I, I thought you sneezed there. What's his last name? Matt Eberflus. He was oh. he was actually a linebacker coach for the Dallas Cowboys, but instead we kept Rod Marinelli. But it's okay. I, I do agree with you with Doug Peterson. As much as I like the guy, um, I think he honestly needs to be fired. Like like you look at the game last last night against Seattle. Seattle's defense, we know them as one of the worst. He ran the ball with Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and Corey Clement only nine times. Their leading rusher was Carson Wentz. Come on. And like you said, that they, they're calling like screen plays like 20 times a game. It's just – it's so stupid. I don't well, know what he's doing. Also the, uh, the, the fourth down when they were down – they were down – Kick think. a dang field goal, dog. Come on. Right. right. They were down well, – what were they down? 
They were, they were down, down like 10. seven. They were down That's seven. I, I think they were down 11 points, and they, they decided to go for it on fourth and five rather than kick the field goal to get it to a one-possession game. Like, that's just easy coaching moves that you have to do. And if you can't make that coaching move, it's time to move on. I mean, come on. Like, you put in Jalen Hurts for one play. <laughs> he throws a completion. Why don't you keep him in? Why don't you see what he could do? Because <laughs> you can't just keep switching these quarterbacks in and out. It's just so – it's so stupid. I it's think there, like, there is so much going on in Philadelphia that that could be an entire segment for a future goat chat. Egg with Connor, I, I can go off right now. Well, also, gonna... I just want to say, I just want to say how undisciplined that defense is. I don't know if that's, I should put that towards Doug or Jim Schwartz or Doug Peterson, but I feel like as a head coach, you need to discipline your team better. Come on. All right. That's going to be the final comment of this segment. It has been a really good conversation. We're going to move into a new slate of goat picks. That's going to come up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Goat Chat. We got the Goat Pick coming up right now. After this, we got the Goat of the Week. Stay tuned for that. Goat Picks. We look at the leaderboard. Nothing's really changed, let's be honest. Connor's still in first. Me and Mike are tied. Tommy is still in last. Tommy, come on. I told you not to go against us, but... uh. I know, I know, but I'm going to get back there. I'll be over 500 soon. All right, Connor, we're going to start with you. 7 o'clock, we got number 11, West Virginia versus number 1, Gonzaga. This is part of the Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona. Who do you have? Well, first off, Jimmy V was a great guy, and definitely if you guys any, – if anyone watching gets the chance, definitely donate to the Jimmy V Fund. It goes towards a great cause to find uh, help for cancer. So definitely just please, if you have the chance, send in money so that we can hopefully find one day – but hopefully one day find a cure for cancer. But anyway, I'm going to go with Gonzaga here. I'm going to ride the hot hand. Um, they're averaging 96 points a game. Um, Daniel Timmy is averaging 26 and a half points a game. They're able to, they're sharing the ball well. They all have, they're starting four or five, or four, uh, they're starting five, four of the five are in double digits averaging for points. I think they're going to handle West Virginia quite easily here. Mike, you want to go before me or? Uh, sure. um, I also agree. I think Gonzaga is going to take this one. They've, They've looked like the number one team in the country, and they are going to continue to look like the number one team in the country against West Virginia. I got to take Gonzaga, too. I've talked about Mark Few, uh, how, I, how I like him um, and how good of a coach he is. Gonzaga's you, – you can't, I, I can't see someone going against Gonzaga unless, unless Tommy, you, you want to go against Gonzaga. I don't want to insult you, but I personally don't think anyone would go against Gonzaga if they had the right mind. Yeah, no, I have to go with Gonzaga here. I went against them um, on Thanksgiving Day when they played Kansas. And Kansas, they're a really good team, and they handled them easily. They won that 102-90, to 90, and then they uh, they handled Auburn e easily as well. So I'm going to pick them in this one. I think that, you know, West Virginia is a good team, and it's going to be a good game. But you said it, Mike. They're the number one team in the country. They're playing like, and they're going to win uh, on Wednesday night. All right, next college basketball game, uh, 10 o'clock on Wednesday. We got Baylor, number two, versus number five, Illinois, also part of the Jimmy V Classic, presented by Corona. Connor, who you have? I'm going to go with Illinois here. I think Illinois is going to win this game against Baylor. Um, they have this one player. I'm not going to try to announce his name because I, do not, I will not pronounce it correctly, but I do believe his name is Ayo Dasunmo. Anyway, he's, he's averaging 25 – 0.7 points per game and 6.7 assists. I think I think they're going to find a way to beat Baylor. Mike? Oh, gosh. This is such a tough game. I, I really like A.O. as a player. You know, he's been really solid for the, Il for the Illinois fighting Illini. But uh, I'm going to have to go with Baylor here. I just think that um, they might not have the star power uh, as Illinois does have in A.O., but I just think <laughs> they're just a much more solid team, more solidly built overall. And I feel like when you have teams like that, you're able to, you know, gang up against a star player like A.O. and really stop him. And he'll be like, A.O., stop defending me like that. And be going to be like, nah, and they're going to win this game. A.O., I got to go with Baylor too. I, I – especially because Connor picked it on Illinois. I thought yeah, that, that, that's the main reason. I was pretty much going with – I thought it was a toss-up, so I just went the opposite of Connor. Yeah, I think this is a prime spot to uh, uh, finally, you know, 
be tied for first. <sighs> Gotta go with Baylor. The Bears, and not the Fighting Illini or whatever the heck that name is. Tommy, <laughs> finish us off with this college basketball game. Yeah, I have to go with Baylor as well. They played really well. They won their first game by Connor 40 sweating. points. What? I can see Connor sweating in his seat. He's like, oh, no, I picked the wrong team. Yeah, no, they won their first game why, by – That's why I won the first round was because Let's you got – Let Tommy talk. Let Tommy talk. Let Tommy talk. That's all right. You can go, Connor. This is why I won the first round because you guys all went against me, and then you guys are going to be like, oh, Connor's sweating in his seat. But at the end of the day, it's going to be Illinois taking down Baylor, and I'm going to be up – Two games in this series. Yeah, you also said that your golfer was going to go to the week. Tommy, proceed. <laughs> yeah, Baylor won their first game by 40, and they won their second by about 30. So they've had commanding victories for their first two wins, and they're going to get a win here. It's not going to be by as many points, I don't think. I think it's going to be a really good game, uh, but I have to go with Baylor. All right, final college game that we have we also have an nfl game but final college game we'll go to that college football number five texas a&m versus number 22 out auburn i remember those rankings connor who are you gonna go with i have to go texas a&m they've just been playing some really 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 good football and auburn really hasn't been playing some very good football um bo nick says that he's ready to face the aggies and he thinks he's gonna have a good game i just think texas a&m is more overpowering and is gonna be able to take this game Mike? I, I agree with Connor here. I'm going with AM. and um, Auburn got absolutely destroyed by Alabama the last week to uh, my surprise, and I think Connor's surprise as well because Nick Saban was not coaching that game, but Alabama still showed up and did what Alabama does, right? And I don't think that's going to change for Auburn. Um, I think a and is a really good team. They are on the fringe of a playoff spot right now. Um, Bo Nix has not played well for Auburn, and that will not change this game. AM is coming out with a W. Yeah, I got to go with the Aggies, too. I mean, talk about Bo Nix. We picked plenty of Auburn games, and he just let us down. I think they might be LSU, but still, he let us down early in, against Georgia that I was very upset. Tommy, who do you have? I have to go with Texas A&M. I think that Auburn is a good team, but I they're not there to the level of Texas A&M, like you said, and I think they're going to come out and get the win on the road. It'll be a big win for them. So that's who I'm picking for Saturday. Okay, final pick. We picked this one before, but obviously they had like 20 million coronavirus cases. Game was rescheduled like three times already. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus Baltimore Ravens. If that game is Wednesday at 340. So, you know, that's like in like 30 minutes for you guys, uh, an hour for you guys if you're watching this episode right when it comes out. Um Connor, are you going to stick with the Steelers? I do have to stick with my original pick. I do have to stick with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, Lamar Jackson is going to be on the field. Um, Mark, the running Ingram, back star. Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins are going to be able to be there afterwards. They didn't think they were. But I don't think it matters. I think Lamar Jackson is a very pivotal piece to that offense. And without him, they are going to miss him. I don't think Ro- Robert Griffin is going to be able to fill in those shoes. I think Steelers improved to 11-0. and Mike, you're going to go with the Steelers? Um, yeah, I agree with Connor. Without uh, Lamar Jackson, the Ravens have no shot. Last year, um, RG3 subbed in week 17 because uh, John Harbaugh rested his stars and he didn't even throw for 100 yards. Um, you know, we love RG3 and we would love to see him succeed, but as of right now, he's just not up to, up to the challenge to face a great Steelers defense. Yeah, I got to. I got to stick with the Steelers, Lamar Jackson or not. I still go with the Steelers. But obviously with those coronavirus cases, who's sitting out and who's not, it's got to be the Steelers. Tommy? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you there. I originally picked the Steelers, and nothing's changed um, in terms of who I'm picking. I just think that they're the better team overall, and then um, losing some key players, that certainly hurts the Ravens. So um, it's easily Pittsburgh for me. Guys, this is two weeks in a row where we all have the same pick except for one game. And what game what was – oh, yeah, and that was Tommy's game that he lost. Yeah, that was tough. Well, too bad I'm going to win it this week and you guys are going to fall another game. Okay. We're, we're, we're one month to go. We're filming on December 1st, so this, this wow. last month is going to push it for uh, this uh, second round of GOAT picks, and then you're going to see two trophies under my name. Oh, my God. 
Wait, this is coming out December 2nd. Happy birthday to Aaron Rodgers from Go Chat. That's all I want to say. I forgot. Okay. It's, it's his birthday tomorrow. All no. right. Well, this has been a great Go Pick segment. We do still have Go to the Week next. We don't want to keep you hanging for too long. So we're going to swing it right into that segment. <laughs> Welcome back for the Go of the Week segment. The leaderboard is up now, and you will see a one tick increase under Tommy's name. It is his first win since like July. It's also the first time he hasn't gone a baseball player since, gosh, maybe ever. So, Tommy, do you, do you have any emotions here? I'm thrilled. I couldn't believe it. They told me before the episode, and I thought they were kidding. It it might have been August, but I think it was July. It's been so long since I won, so thank you to the voters. I appreciate it. I probably won't win again until, like, baseball season starts again. But, no, actually, probably I, I'll keep winning because I'm not picking baseball people. But Well, you um, know what, Tommy? Why don't, why don't you start us off here? Do you think you can go back-to-back -back with your pick? I'm hoping, but you guys have some good picks, so I'm not sure. But I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson. He had a great game on Thanksgiving Day against the Cowboys. Mike's team, I know Mike loved watching it. Um, but the Cowboys, <laughs> or not the Cowboys, Antonio Gibson had three touchdowns, and he rushed for 115 yards. Uh, he was just outstanding that whole game. He was a big reason why. Uh, the Washington football team scored 41 points in their victory over the Cowboys. So I have to go with him for my go of the week. Mike, I'm going to swing it to you. Yeah. Um, Antonio Gibson did have a great game against the Cowboys and, you know, he, he tore us to pieces and made us look like fools. But anyways, he is not my go of the week. My go of the week is the guy you won with last week, Tommy, Derek Henry. He had 27 <laughs> carries for a hundred 78 yards against the Indianapolis Colts, the number one rush defense in all of football. And he had about like 160 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. And Tannehill also vultured uh, another one of his touchdowns in the goal line with a read option. But he was absolutely phenomenal. He looked like the best running back in the league um, this past Sunday. And there's no reason why he shouldn't win go of the week. Matt, who's your pick? There is a reason why he shouldn't win it literally two words is Tyreek Hill I mean first off kudos to you for going to Derrick Henry I won with Derrick Henry Tommy's won with Derrick Henry it seems like you're a little desperate so kudos to you over there Tommy congrats to uh Antonio Gibson for tearing up that Cowboys uh trash defense so it's got to be Tyreek Hill guys I don't think I don't think there's a, another answer other than Tyreek Hill 13 passes he caught 13 passes 269 yards three touchdowns a dominant performance one that is very similar to Jerry Rice's uh, when he had 13 receptions to 225 yards and five touchdowns against the Atlanta Falcons so you know not as many uh, touchdowns but I mean we just think first quarter Patrick Mahomes tosses a dime to Tyree Kill for 75 yards and another touchdown for 44 yards and then another one for 28 20 yards in the third quarter this guy had like what 56 fantasy points or something yeah it was insane like, come on, he, he probably carried a bunch of uh, people to victories. It's got to be Tyree Kill. I don't think there's another answer that exists in this wonderful universe. Well, I'm going to try to give one here. I'm going to go with Sarah Fuller of Vanderbilt <laughs> Football. She is the first girl to play for a Power 5 football team. She was a kicker. She's a goalkeeper for the Vanderbilt soccer team there at the college, and she was able to break the gender barrier in Power 5 schools and was able to take the field to start the second half of a Power 5 football game. Unfortunately, she didn't get a chance to kick a field goal because the Vanderbilt football team hasn't won a game this year, and she didn't get a chance to try to kick a field goal. But definitely her just being able to step onto the field and kick a ball definitely breaks that gender barrier. And we can just hope that there's more of that in the future because we need it. I was so shocked when I saw Vanderbilt had zero points. I didn't know they were that bad. I, I was like, uh, I was like, I wonder if you know, uh, Sarah kicked an extra point or a, a field goal. But no, it's just that the uh, the the only thing she kicked was the um, second half uh, kickoff. But it's a great pick. I, it's better than Tommy and uh, Mike's. We'll be honest. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up a great number. Episode fifty six. The voting for Go to the Week is going to be out on Thursday, so definitely check that out. Just remember to click Tyreek Hill. It's pretty easy. It's just one. Uh, click the King, Derek Henry, King him for another go of the week, because that's all he's been doing when he's been the running 
Um, he's just been winning go of the weeks left and right. So it's time I dig into that pot a little and take a W out of there. I told I you. Think Connor, be one. Connor would be my pick if we were allowed to vote. But if I was allowed to vote, I'd pick myself. Because come on, Tyree Kill had fifty-six fantasy the, points. The there. ego, the ego on Matt came there. Well, the, the uh, ego, the ego. Who's right? I mean, I've been winning go to the week since I was uh, started this whole thing. I mean, I literally came back. The best comeback in history of goat chat is <laughs> zero. I was in the last. You guys were making fun of me, and then I come back and I haven't looked back. I mean, I've just been the crown of this whole show. Well, I mean, goat picks, goat picks. Oh, that's the only thing he has on us is like goat picks. Like, come on, man. Well, none of you guys have anything on me. Uh, let's see. Better debater. Um, I have the go go to the week number on you. Uh, let's see. I beat you in Madden like twenty times already. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, no, Connor. As much as I as as big as my ego is, you've been doing great. It's all, it's, hey, all love. it's all love. It's always good to come on and talk sports with these three guys. We definitely just hope we are giving you guys some good entertainment at home. Obviously, just stay safe. Stay at home if you need to. Cases are spiking. But definitely tune into Goat Chat to get yourself some laughs and entertainment about the sports world. But until then, we will see you guys again on Saturday.